Welcome back. A report on social justice in the European Union has found government spending on education here lags behind the majority of its counterparts. The report by a German philanthropic group says Ireland spends the smallest amount in the EU on pre-primary education. Theresa Heaney, CEO of Early Childhood Ireland, joins us now. Good morning to you. Thank you morning, for joining Theresa. us, Theresa. Uh, can you bring us up to speed on this report? Yeah, the report came out this week and what's interesting, I suppose, is that this report uh, confirms every other report that really has been issued by, the, by any of the EU entities over the past 10 years. And it confirms once again that Ireland is either last or nearly last when uh, in the league of investment in early childhood education. So this particular report about social justice uh, shows that Ireland is 21st out of 28 in terms of spending on education and uh, and in terms of pre-primary education, it's last. It's 28th out of 28th after Greece and after all of the countries. And in, this isn't in a new the, problem, Theresa. No, it's this not is, a this problem. This is the problem, but it's not a new problem. No, it's the... <clears throat> in recent years, we've seen the introduction of free, price, free preschool education, the early, mm. early childhood education yeah. programme. A lot of parents listening to the programme <clears throat> will have used that, and yeah. that's really good. And the last budget, we saw that that was doubled. So now children yeah. from next September, from the age of two years, and eight months are entitled to this 15, 15 hours a week. Um, but the, that doesn't solve all of the problems because what it doesn't do is it doesn't fund all of the, the hours around the 15 hours a week because most families, if they're using their preschool as part of their ability to go to work, um, st are still having to pay for their child from the age of six months and right up until the, their child is maybe 12 or 13. And there's no guarantee of places either. No, no. And, I, and that is definitely an issue that we're beginning to see. There is there is definitely concern, there, there's good reason to be concerned about capacity in, uh, in terms of will there be enough places for all the children who are entitled to? I mean, we were just looking at those, at uh, some parliamentary questions, some mm -hmm. answers that came out last week. And it would certainly suggest that in areas of urban, uh, in, in the greater Dublin area, for example, in Fingal and in South Dublin, that there could be a shortage of as much as 2,000 places in each of those uh, next September. So, you know, what it all points to is that we really need to plan and to think about what kind of an early childhood education system we want for Ireland in the <clears> next 30 years. And perhaps we should be looking to our EU counterparts. I mean, who would you identify as leaders and excellent in this field? Well, I mean, everybody talks about the scans, everybody talks about mm. the Scandinavian countries, but there are other countries closer to home that are doing really well. I mean, Scotland is doing really well. They've made a commitment in Scotland to have a graduate-led workforce. Our workforce in Ireland, we're having a real problem recruiting people to work mm. in the sector because the salaries, as, as you sa said, Simon, mm. are so poor. We've got an average salary of about 11 euros an hour. And a key problem with our salaries is that a lot of people only work um, 15 hours a week or say 20 hours a week and 38 weeks of the year. Every year about 14% of people who work in early childhood <clears throat> education are required to go on the dole. So it's very hard to recruit people to work in the sector. In uh, in Theresa, in terms of the whole industry, mm. I mean that's that's a huge problem because you can't attract people to no. take, pick up, take up jobs. In yeah. it. And on the other side of it then there's that starting statistic that in terms of the people, the parents who are, are paying for it, Irish people pay an average 30% of mm. their salary, whereas yeah. the European average is 13. Yeah, between 13 and 14% is the average in Europe, and Irish parents are paying about <clears throat> 28 to 30%, which is a phenomenal amount of money. And bearing in mind that parents are, are paying for that for like five years maybe, and indeed yeah. more if they're using after school services. So it all points to the same place. We need to you know, recognise as a, as a country that we want to have a high quality system for children before they come to school. Mm. Why, you know, it's, why would it be okay to know what's going to happen when your child is five and not to know what's going to happen when your child is four or yeah, three or three, two yeah. or one? So, you know, we do have to recognise that this is the next big social policy in terms of education uh, horizon that, that we need to begin to address, I think, as a society. And I think as well, and you touched on, Theresa, <clears throat> talking about how, you know, the 15 hours um, a week, but a lot of families would work full time oh, yeah. and so they need to subsidise those 15 hours and so it can be very costly which is of course keeping many uh, women and men from returning to the workplace if they want to because oh. of this 
Absolutely. Huge. I mean, we would hear regularly, or I mean, we all do, uh, with, you know, with people who have uh, friends who are having children saying they couldn't possibly afford a third child. Mm. And, you know, as a society, we need to think about that mm. because that has implications in the future for, you know, who's going to be looking after us when we're old and pensions and all of those things, you know. So we do have to recognise that there's a journey that, that our society has to think about. Looking at it as, as a whole, if you, if you had a magic wand, what's the first area of attack in terms of what's the first thing you would change to start the rest of this, the problems in this bigger picture fall into place? The first, the, the most <clears throat> important issue will always be the quality of the experience that mm -hmm. a child is getting wherever right. that child is. So if that child, if she's in a childminder's home, if she's in a daycare setting, uh, the quality of the experience that she or he is getting is the most important thing. So that, therefore, it's really important <clears throat> that we uh, have sufficient investment in place to recruit and retain the very best quality and people. Training. And training. And, and yes. trained, yeah. But we have to recognise that those people need to be paid properly, yeah. that the services that they're working on have to be sustainable, that the people who own or operate those services have, you know, can predict um, when they're going to get their, their subsidy from government, how what levels of investment there's going to be, mm. what capacity, how much they need to expand, how much they need to grow their business. So there has to be something about recognising the quality of the experience of for children and for all of the people who run those services, and many the people, staff and the operators. They're in the childcare industry, they're doing their best, the best yeah. that they and can do very, with limited very resources. Sick. I mean, and it's not a small sector. There's 25,000 people mm. working in the sector. So it's not, it's you know, it's not nothing. And if it's shut down or if it wasn't available and if it's not of good quality, then you have to recognise that those parents who are leaving children in those places every day you know, are going to work with a heavy heart, worried. I mean, we want yeah. parents to be really <clears throat> confident that mm. when they say cheerio to Mary, that Mary's going to be happy and smiling when, when you come back to collect her, yeah. you know? The so thing that strikes I think me as the, being so the vulnerable, issue. the age group we're talking about, is because they Absolutely. don't yet have the words to tell you the way your primary school children might tell you if they had a mm. bad day or if something happened to them. Yeah. These are babies and toddlers. Absolutely. You're completely trusting the care of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the reasons that we've seen recently the, the investment in the free pre school program for example is because all there is so much now uh, research about the importance of investing in the first particularly the first three years of life all of the the neurons get get connected in those first everybody will tell you that the children are sponges so it's really important that we recognize that the people working with them uh, have to be treated well and respected well and we go for the best quality people possible Great. thanks so much for joining us Thank today you for Teresa. Thank you. explaining all